Introducing the Little Green Seeding Machine. This tool can help you seed your microgreens up to 300 trays per hour. With all this extra free time you'll have, you can spend it growing the business with sales and production, or you can spend more time with family and friends and less time on the farm. The Little Green Seed Machine works with all of the most common microgreens varieties, including pea, sunflower, radish, brassicas, mustards, amaranth, basil, and so many more. This tool seeds much more evenly than hand seeding, reducing disease risk while also increasing the uniformity of your crops, and do it twice as fast. Pre-order your Little Green Seed Machine today and join the microgreens revolution. Hey guys, I'm here in Tokyo, Japan, visiting Edome Herb, which is a vertical microgreens farm here in Tokyo. And this farm is absolutely crushing it. They are growing over 700 trays a week now, and they are actually going through a major expansion, increasing production from 700 to 600 trays. And this current facility I'm at will all be just edible flowers, which is insane. Uh, and they're gonna have a new facility, which is four times the size, doing twice the amount of production of microgreens. So stay tuned, we got a really great tour for you of a amazing vertical farm here in Tokyo. Thanks so much for having me at the farm. This is really cool to be here in Tokyo and see uh, what you've created over the last few years. I know we've been working together for you know last few years to help you uh, you know make the farm what it is today. Um, but it's really cool to see what you've built here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and your team and how, you know, how hardworking everyone is and, um, and how much production you're getting out of this space. So thanks so much for having me and, and uh, inviting me here. Thank you and welcome to my company. And uh, uh, firstly, I want to explain about my company name, Edomai Harb. Uh, it's, uh, the Edomai means like uh, made in Tokyo and fresh and uh, high quality and Mostly we grow uh, micro herbs and uh, mostly we sell the sell our products to the chefs like over ninety percent and uh, they uh, the chefs focus on to the flavor and the taste and they need the high quality greens and uh, uh, and actually I work. I've worked in the restaurants for over five years. Okay, cool. As a Italian chef, and uh, from that experience, I knew that the vegetables are very dif different from different. Like each vegetables are very different. Yeah. Like in flavor and taste. So after I quit my restaurant works, then uh, then I started to work in the farm and they produce their herbs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Especially like baby leaves and uh, baby greens and microgreens and also edible flowers. And they sell the products to chefs in Tokyo mostly. Oh, okay. So, and uh, I decided to come to Tokyo and start this business uh, three years ago. Okay, so you, you're not from originally from Tokyo, you moved here for the farm? Yeah. Okay, cool. Where are you originally from? Uh, it's called Hyogo. Okay. Hyogo Prefecture. It's Kansai area, so it's very far from okay. here. And okay. I've never been to, like, I've never stayed in Tokyo, actually. Okay, So cool. I didn't know about Tokyo anything. But, uh, like, I moved in here in 2020. There's a corona yeah, yeah. pandemic. So... Like I, I, I just thought it's the time to start my own business. Yeah, yeah. Because everything is stopped and uh, everything has like, like got like zero from yeah. zero, right? Yeah. So, and also the master, uh, I like, so three years ago I worked 
and uh, the hard farmer. Oh, okay. And uh, the owner of that farm, my master, told me, like, uh, messaged me, be you. Be you, the concept, me, be you is like, for me, uh, be different. Or like be unique yeah so I thought I should do the different things from others so in Japan there was no in like indoor uh, farming with the soil yeah yeah and uh, it's all hydroponic yes yeah and uh, also there's no farm in Tokyo really yeah wow now I can see uh, several farms in yeah. Tokyo, but uh, like in 2020 when you started, yeah, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't find find any like big company in Tokyo. Wow. So I, I thought it's gonna be the big chance. Yeah. So I just decided to come to Tokyo, and I uh, talked to many chefs and uh, restaurant owners, and, and like presented them. Uh, I want to grow herbs in Tokyo and like deliver to deliver to the chefs like uh, lightly after the harvesting. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it would be the, like super fresh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so so I was thinking to start my own business in like uh, Shibuya, Ebisu, Roppongi. It's in the like main city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the restaurant owner told me, just find, just do, like, do you know the rent in this city? It, yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's very, it's very, very expensive. expensive. Yeah. 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 So, and he, he advised me, uh, just go find cheap area in Tokyo and find the old, old, factory yeah and I found this yeah at first like this factory is very uh, used used to uh, used to produce the uh, machines oh, like, okay uh, yeah, yeah, yeah and uh, like or the the owner used here over 40 years Wow so it was very old yeah and yeah. for me it was very like great the the old oldness is very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you get a, a like generally bigger space for less money. Yeah, yeah. It's, yes. it's very similar at home. Is is um, there's a lot of like used to be a big manufacturing hub where I am in Canada, mm -hmm. and then over time, especially in the Northeast in the U.S., there's a lot of places where there's like big warehouses that are just empty. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing now that more and more manufacturing is going to Vietnam and China and other places. That I'm yeah. guessing the factories like this in Tokyo are more empty than they were maybe 50 mm. years ago sort of thing uh, yeah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's amazing it's on in two years it's amazing what you've built it's uh, really cool thank you. like you're growing on 11 levels here for people that can't really tell it's um floor to ceiling uh super super efficient because the ceilings aren't that high here do you know how high they are they're like maybe uh, 12 feet 3.5 3. meters okay okay yeah so they're, they're they're not that high but you have 11 growing levels in such a small space, which yeah. is really, really impressive to get uh, the most out of the expensive real estate mm. in Tokyo. Yeah, because um, this factory is only like 45 square meters. Yeah. It's very small and like, uh, I needed to make it high. Yeah. Yeah, yeah to that, make that, it work. That, that, that was the only choice for me. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, so, when I started my business and I watched your video like over a hundred times. <laughs> and, uh, the, the one with Curtis Stone, like the tour, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, at first, like first three months, I didn't know how to grow vegetables, right? And so I just contacted you. I, I emailed you yeah. actually and like, please help me. Right. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and you told me like, okay, just uh, let's do the Zoom, Zoom video consulting. Yeah. Then 
you told me like temperature, the humidity, like everything, like about the soil as well. And uh, the and after that, I just figured out the the soil quality is like the the soil quality is the most yeah. uh, main part of this business. So I I looked for the uh, organic uh, fertilizer. Yeah, and also the like so every day I mix the soil soil by myself and changing the uh, right the fertilizer yeah, yeah fertilizer and the uh, other materials uh later yeah and yeah. test test again test again and uh, and finally i made my own recipe of the amazing. soil that's amazing yeah and uh, and using that soil uh i think the flavor and the taste is very getting better and better and now now we uh, changed my our soil, soil recipe four times oh wow okay yeah that's amazing yeah i yeah, know i could smell like even just walking by the shirvel i could smell how uh pungent it was which is which is really nice um but yeah like like having this done in two years is like <laughs> it's just it's crazy to see and then what's even more exciting is that this space is uh gonna be just part one and you're actually yeah. in construction right now um almost done you said about two weeks away yes. from having uh, a space that you said it's four times as large mm -hmm. yeah yes so um you're you're in expansion mode you're growing really fast um and, and it's just really really cool to see uh because because you're right like the soil from my experience is really everything uh and and most like most vertical farms grow hydroponically so they mm. don't have uh the same quality that you can get with soil so it's really really nice to see that you're focusing on the quality of the soil um and that'll pay dividends for many years to come with um having the loyalty from chefs and your customers uh and creating like the highest quality product you can which is something that's being in japan for only a few days now, I see how focused society is here on quality product. Mm. Um, whereas this is something very new to me. I know it might sound a little crazy for, for people that live in Japan, um, but the quality of everything, food, subway uh. system, it's, it's insane. So uh, this just fits in so well with uh, the societal norms here. And I think that it'll do so, so well because of that. Uh, whereas a lot of other microgreens farmers may be growing hydroponically and the quality may just not be as high as the or anywhere close to what you're growing here yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and if, from now on uh we usually sell to the like french or italian chefs like mostly they yeah, are those chefs. Oh, okay but uh we are in tokyo so like there there are many japanese cuisine like including sushi uh tempura yakitori right yeah so from now on, I want to try uh, sell them my herbs. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if something like wasabi uh, uh, would, would do well as a as a herb for uh, more traditional Japanese restaurants here. Because mm. um, I actually saw <laughs> for the first time real wasabi at a grocery store because it's it's really rare at home. Um, so it was really cool to see see that here. So like wasabi microgreens might be something that uh, yeah, could yeah, do yeah. well with with that type of customer. Mm. Um, but it'd be great to kind of go through the process because uh, you have a lot of machinery here, which is really cool. Uh, you have automated watering, soil mixing machinery, harvester, seeder. Uh, it'd be really cool to kind of just go through the process and see how you grow the microgreens from uh, step one to when it's packaged and delivered out to customers uh, in the area. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, what is, does it start with the soil generally? Yeah. So, we put the soil in here. Uh, ah, yeah, this one. So you guys get a right now a custom blended yes. soil. So like you figured out the soil recipe mm -hmm. that makes the most sense for you guys to grow. Yeah, um, and, uh, and then you get the company to to make it. Yes, I asked one company to mix uh, the soil by my recipe and just they bring us that soil yeah. and uh, put the soil in here 
yeah. and also uh, add the add some water as well. And after mixing with the water, we use this machine. Actually, well, there's a few steps here. Yeah, yeah. But this this machine is made. It's made in Japan. Yes. Yeah. So it's a multi. What's nice is how compact it is. This is by yeah. far the most compact. Uh, you know, which maybe not as an issue now that you're getting into bigger space, but in the current space you have, this is definitely uh, a good size. And it's nice that it detaches the two pieces mm -hmm. so that you can actually have it run uh, in such a small space, which is yeah. really important for this type of setup. And, and it's cool that it has a conveyor, or looks like two conveyor belts. Oh, one's for the soil. Got it. Yeah, there are many machines in Japan to putting that spot the soil. Yeah. But uh, but if you choose the cheap ones, then it's gonna be like it, it works uh it doesn't work well. So I just chose the like a higher quality one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. With machinery, they're like generally a one time cost. It's worth it to spend the money and buy higher yeah. quality uh, I think so. equipment. So the soil would go in there. Put, yeah, put the soil in here and uh, put the the soil come, yeah, it comes out down. through the here, like the it's almost like a vertical conveyor, and then it goes uh, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. and then it drops it drops onto the tray on that side. Mm -hmm. Oh, this side, the tray tray goes in this side. Yes, and then um, it'll come out this side. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, cool! It's got like a okay, it's got like a brush system. Yeah, so that, that that ensures that it gets like flattened. Yes. Oh, okay, perfect. And then what are um, what are these things? Oh, this one is the put, push, put the air. Oh, so it just like any loose soil comes off on yeah. the sides. Yes, yes. Oh, so the machine came with that. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, so it's, no, got, it's actually, got like an air compressor connecting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Air compressor here. Okay. Ah, so yeah, it's got like a little compressor. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, and that just. Makes it so the trays come up completely clean. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I've, yeah, I've never seen that. It's actually really cool. Uh, so you just put the, the tray in. It's got like a a laser or something to sense when the tray's in there. And it's smart. It's actually got a thing where it collects the excess soil at the bottom too, and then it comes out this side, and it's got air that cleans the edges, which is really yeah. smart. Let's put it one more time. This is really cool. This is a, I can tell it's like a good quality machine. All right, cool. Yeah, no, that's, it looks, it looks like it fills it like really, really well. Um, yeah, so it's. I always say it's worth it to spend money on machinery, and this is definitely looks yeah. like it, it does it does a good job. Um, before before buying this machine, we put the soil by hand. Yeah, yeah, tray. yeah, yeah. Um, we're hoping um, me uh, and Vertigro, James from Vertigro, we're hoping the next machine we design is going to be like a similar to the Cedar, but it just rolls the soil uh, on, um, and it'll be. You know, a lot less expensive yeah, yeah, yeah. than a machinery like this. So yeah, for the small for the small farms that are just starting out or just want to take the the first step in automation with soil mixing, uh, it'll be a good option. So hoping in the next year we'll <laughs> we'll develop that. But this is a great option when you have scale um, and when you're growing as many trays as, as you are. So right now, um, how many trays are you guys growing roughly per week? Uh, weekly, maybe seven hundred. Wow! Wow! And then in the new facility, what do you have capacity for? Um, 1,600. 1,600 plus this? Oh, uh, no. Just that, just there. Just, just there? Just. And one. then plus seven, 700 here. No, I mean. Uh, or here you're not growing anymore, right? Yes. Okay, okay. We, like, we grow edi edible flowers. Oh, oh yeah, here. you mentioned that. Yeah. So all this space. Is going to be converted for for edible flowers for yes, chefs, yes. And then the space, the new space, which is four times the size, 
um, we'll be able to grow 1,600 uh, trays a week. Okay, yes. wow, yeah, you're, 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 you're starting to get up there. Um, yeah, those are, those are big numbers, yeah. um, which is really, that's really exciting. Um, yeah, and uh, like we, we figured out that, uh, but that like 700, 700 trays here is too much and uh, we can't move smoothly yeah. way. So it's very stressful for the workers. So like uh, the new farm is like four times bigger, but but the uh, vegetables are like 2.2 2, uh, times. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's a certain point where um, you need like the, the space for machinery and to pack and move and like, like yeah. it, uh, a lot, I, I find that um, I, people that start out will often just try to put as much production because it makes sense because like that's what makes the money, right? Yes, yes. Like having floor space doesn't really make you money, but having the production does. Um, but then once you hard, start hiring staff, there's so many other considerations that start coming yeah. into play, like the quality of life for the staff and how uh, safe it is and all, all those kind of things that um, as an individual growing, starting out, you may not think about, but then as you scale up, yes, yes. it starts becoming more and more important because I'm guessing at this point, you're still doing production, but mostly the staff yeah. are doing it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, do you mostly do sales? Uh, 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 no, we, we, uh, I do like everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so, yeah. so uh, you do sales, you help with production. So, I think you said you're the one who does the soil yes, usually. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, and uh, also the building the new farm too. Yeah, yeah, I guess so that's hire, hiring the people. Yeah, too. yeah, that's so. that's a lot. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's a it, it's a lot to take but, on. But little by little, like the uh, my team staff uh, get get stronger and like they they can like uh, they can sell they can produce the product by yeah. themselves. Oh, that's so. amazing. Yes, that's amazing. Yeah, what 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 uh, took me many many years to do? It looks like you've you've done in two years, which is amazing. Uh, Thanks yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm only a, I'm just a part of it. I just share the information, but you actually execute it. And honestly, mm. in my opinion, executing is the harder part than the information. Information will get you to be able to execute, but then the actual execution itself is, as I'm sure you can imagine, is or as you've experienced, I should say, it, it can be quite difficult to yeah, yeah, to yeah. manage everything that you need to do. Plus, expanding the business, doing sales. Uh, managing your team like it's it, it's yeah. it's a lot um, yeah. so it's, it's impressive but it's, it's very ex exciting yeah yeah, yeah no it, it's a very exciting time i feel the energy uh <laughs> and the excitement here and it's just yeah seeing everything uh in action and the team working here it's it's really it's really cool yeah thanks. so one, once the trays are yep. planted the next thing you do mm -hmm. is the seeding process yes so like we seed in we see it outside, and usually we do we do the seeding here. Okay. Okay. This table. is like a like a little outdoor space. Oh, yeah. Today we're going to wash the wash. trays here. Got it. Got it. Okay. Oh, yep. So you guys have a tray washing machine, which mm -hmm. is this is probably the smallest commercial one I've seen. Um, where did you find this, and like how has it been working for you guys? Oh. And, yeah, I have so many questions. <laughs> Actually, it's this is not so rare in Japan. Interesting. Uh, this is uh, uh, originally for rice growing. Oh, cool. Yeah. So for in Japan, maybe it's very usual thing. So is it? So it normally has water and everything for to get the. Is it to clean the rice or to get the hulls oh, off? I mean, like when you grow the rice, then uh, you put the rice seeds on the trays yeah. first, right? So in Japan, like rice business is very popular. Ah. So they, we, the rice farmers use these the tray, trays. Oh, so it's to clean the trays for rice farming. Yes. Got it, got it. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so this is a pretty common machine in Japan. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Um, what What is this cost roughly in, in Japan to buy one of these? Mm. 1500 yes. 1500 okay okay that makes, <laughs> that makes a lot more sense so 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 this this would cost 1500 us to buy new yes um, and it's a pretty common machine here to purchase and how does how do you find it works to clean the trays does it work pretty well yeah um it's difficult to clean perfectly at once yeah, yeah. then so you inside once and 
twice and maybe three times. Okay. Can you adjust the speed or no? It's just one speed. Just one speed. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. That's crazy though how cheap it is for for a tray washing machine. Um, that's really cool. So, uh, how long ago did you get this? How long? Yeah. Mm, a year maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. And it sped up the process of cleaning a lot. Yeah. 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 Maybe like uh, three times faster. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, before using this machine, we wash by hand every, yeah. every trace. Yeah, which is very slow. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a lot of automation here, which is really great. So I'm great to see you have a, a tray washer because I didn't even know that this was a common piece of equipment in Japan. So that's great to see. Uh, so right now you're seating by hand, mm -hmm. but you yes. actually just got the um, the little green seating machine. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which you're going to start using shortly. Um, yes. just I, now we cal calculate all the... Uh, seeds. Yeah. Like one by one. Yeah. So you, each tray. you weigh each one and yes. then seed it by hand. So, and for, to do 700, um, I was asking one of the staff, he says it takes like six to nine hours roughly to, to seed. Yes. So <laughs> once you start using the seeding machine, it'll save you a ton of time. So yeah. I'm really excited for you guys to, uh, to use that. But for right now, still you're, you're, you, cause you just got it. Yes. Um, so you're still seeding by hand. Yes. Um, and then you're planning to switch over probably in the new facility in yes. two weeks to the to the little green seating machine. Mm. Yes. Cool. Um, okay, so then it's seated here. You weigh out everything. Do you usually weigh it out like before in advance and to save time, or do you weigh it out and then each each individual uh, tray you 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 uh, weigh out the weigh, same day? Weigh the uh, seed. Yeah. Seeds. Do you do you do it the same day or do you do it in advance? Um, the weighing of the seeds. The Day before. Day before. Yes. Yeah. So you split it into like two days almost. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. And then, so th this area is used for, for that. And then it's also used for tray washing. Yes. Is there anything else you use this outdoor? Well, I guess storage, it looks like. Yeah. A little bit. So the, the water here. comes from here. Uh, we use this, this for the watering the soil. To, to get them to start germinating. Yes, yes. And like stack the trays here. Yeah. These are the uh, washed one. Yeah, so these are ready to, 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 yes, to yes. fill with yes. soil. And But you don't germinate them here, right? You germinate oh. them? Yeah. Yeah, here. Yeah, okay. So after seeding, we put put the, put the them together yeah. and put the trays here. So and one, wait two, to germinate. Three, four, five, six. And you do six? Yes, six. Six trays, yeah. Mizuna six. Have and you ever tried to do more than six? Uh, no. Okay. Um, and then, okay, so then they germinate here, and then the crops you're growing is one thing I didn't ask you yet. Um, oh, uh, Mizuna and a red mustard, red kale, and sunflowers, radish, uh, pink, pink one and red one, and also chabel. Ozeyu, Ozeyu, Sorrel, Sorrel, so, 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 yeah, so, yeah, and uh, Dill, Fennel, Cilantro, Nastachum. I think Shiso you grow as well? Uh, no, no? Uh, Mitsuba. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mitsuba and, and uh, Negi is a uh, Chai. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What what would you say is the most popular products with your current customers? I think uh, we we mixed the the six over six uh, uh -huh. fifteen kinds of of greens into into a mix. Yes. Okay. And we sell that mix like ninety percent over oh, wow. 90%. Oh, Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So you have one product that's like majority. Yes. And it's just a mixture of everything you grow, pretty much? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, cool. And weekly around uh, 150 kilos wow. of mix. Wow. And you do pea shoots as well, right? I think. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. and pea shoots, yeah. Um, and shungiku. Yeah. And marigolds. Marigolds, the group for the greens. Yes. Okay, cool. And, all, and does everything you grow go into that mix? Yes. Okay. And like, then you sell some varieties individually? Yeah, like uh, we don't mix cilantro and nastachim. Okay. And we sell them just separately. Yeah, separately. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, cool. That's really cool. I guess you, you grow some unique crops here that I personally haven't grown. What's the most of them? I guess are around two to five days, six days for like something like cilantro. Is there any other? Is there any crops that are longer than that for germinating that you grow? Over ah uh, mitzuba. Mitzuba is like maybe ten days. Oh wow, just to germinate. Like, yes. And then how long from from seed to harvest? Uh, around twenty to twenty five days. Okay. Is that the longest crop you grow? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And but but the flavor is very strong. And yeah, I'd love to try it after because I've never I've never uh, at least yeah. I don't think I've had it before. Let's check the mitzuba. Yeah, sure. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It kind of looks like a little bit like cilantro. Oh, it's not though, but it, yeah. Huh. I thought maybe it was a brassica, but it's not. I don't know. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to try this. Oh, interesting. I've never, <laughs> I've never seen. It looks like. Oh yeah. A, yeah. Uh, is that, is that, is that what's knife. commonly used in Japan for uh, for hand harvesting? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Kama. kama. We in call this kama. Interesting. That's really cool. I've never seen yeah, that before. Like, yeah. You can is the uh, shape. Oh, to sharpen it. Yes, sharpen. Yeah, it. yeah. Interesting. I wonder if that's maybe a better method for. Like, I'm interested to see how it. Yeah. So you would it's, normally normally you would just do the whole like you would just cut the whole tray at once like before you had because you obviously have the harvester but before yeah, you had the harvester you would but just, uh, for for mitzvah or well, like dill it's very like soft to ah. cut cut this machine way. Oh, okay. So we use the kama. Oh, so you do you do use that? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Oh, interesting. It's like celery with like a. Uh, it's like celery and chervil. What, what interesting flavor. It's like a mix of a bunch of different things, and then it has like a little bit of, of spice to it. Hmm. Like hmm. all the Japanese know this herb. Do they usually use it as like a, a salad grain, or what's how is it normally used? Mm. Put, put in the soup. In actually. soup. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, that would actually be really good. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah, I know. I've never had that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking to mix mitsuba to my uh, mix, mix green. Okay. And we, we name it Japanese mix okay. and I sell it to Japanese chefs. Interesting. Yeah, no, because if, 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 you're, if you're moving towards that market yeah, yeah, yeah. and everyone knows what, what this herb is, mm -hmm. then it's a lot easier to, to have. Yeah, I think that, that's, that's really smart. I think, I think it'll do well. Um, so is it normally it's grown like it's a full size plant mm -hmm. normally. So how, how long from is this from maturity? Like how long uh, until you would normally harvest like that? Like over, I think over. Outdoors. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then like, like this one, when, oh, when would this be ready for to harvest? Us? Yeah, for you guys. Yeah. Oh, we, we sell like this. This size. Okay. Yes, this size. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Is the seed really expensive? Mm, a little bit. Yeah. But not so much. Not Okay. Mm. Yeah. It's easy to get here. I yes. wonder if it's easy to get home. I would love to grow this at home just for, yeah, because like, yeah, the, the flavor, it's a, such a unique mix of, mm. I don't mean like salty, um, celery with like chervil kind yeah, of flavor. Yeah. I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, Maybe I, I didn't see on Johnny's. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. You get it from a local Japanese yes, yes. seed company? Okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe cool. many Jap Japanese farmers uh, grow mitsuba oh. for microgreen. They grow for microgreen. Oh, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I've never heard anyone. <laughs> I wonder if um, uh, Oliver from Boston Microgreens, he grew like the amount of rice he grows. Mm. Um, and he's actually been in Japan. So I wonder if he's, if he's, uh, if he grows, I'll, I'll check and see. Um, but yeah, th th I think this is, uh, um, that's really cool. It's yeah. a unique variety. That's like, I, I hope, I hope people watching this bring this variety to North America for Japanese restaurants uh, there. Cause I think that would be a good marketing yeah, opportunity because yeah, yeah. I'm sure, uh, it's probably a lot more difficult to get this green in New York city or LA. Mm. Uh, and there's lots of Japanese restaurants that would probably love to have it. So, um, a good marketing opportunity for people in, yeah. uh, in North America for sure. Nice. Yeah. But that, 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 that's a really cool um, harvesting <laughs> knife. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so th this, um, like, like, would you say if someone used this, would this be faster than you using just an, a regular knife? Hmm. Yeah. I think it's difficult for, like, at, at first, like, you, you can easily cut your finger. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very sharp. Okay. So, like, for Japanese, like, we use kama 
to remove the uh, greens outside. Yeah, right? like to harvest the greens outside. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, like for us, it, this is like not not unusual. Yeah, but yeah. For you guys. Yeah, yeah. It's cool though. It's cool <laughs> to see the, like the cultural differences, even within farming, which is really cool. Mm. Um, okay, so then after germination, it mm -hmm. goes in the in the uh, in the in the levels here. Yes. Um, and you have eleven levels. Do yes. you grow like you put the crops anywhere, or is there specific crops you put on certain levels? Like, how is your kind of system okay. for that kind of work? Um, like here, it's uh, silly. Uh, how I don't know that English name, but uh, like dill, Korea, uh, cilantro, chabel. Yeah, like the herbs. Yes, the herbs. herbs? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, greens, like here. Ah, okay. Like this. This is like. Uh, red mustard, kale, and mizuna. Yeah. And is there a reason? Is like the watering different, or is, is, is uh, there something different? Temperature. Temperature. Oh, it's yeah. cooler here. Yes, cooler. Ah, cooler okay, okay. and uh, hotter. Over there, it's like hotter. Oh, okay, okay. So we put the sunflowers over ah, there. Because, they, yeah, they like the warmth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. And then it looks like you still have, it looks like you ran out of space. I don't know if that's your original system. Oh, uh, yes. Um, but even that, that's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven also. Mm -hmm. Eleven levels. Yes. I've never seen, how did you attach the racks uh, together? They just, just. You just hammer them hammer, in? Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I wonder, that's really smart because then like if for people that are still doing more of the manual way, you, it looks like you can get even potentially more than 11 <laughs> levels to the ceiling. But yeah. having said that, even just getting 11 is a lot better than 6, which is what mm. most people have uh, at home uh, in North America. So just yeah. getting that extra ceiling height just saves a lot of space. And then yeah. right now, um, those ones obviously would be manually watered. But these ones mm -hmm. are watered automatically. Yes. Um, so how, how does that kind of, how does your system work for the watering? Um, the water comes from there. Okay, so you have a main water line. Yes. There. That one. Yeah. And it goes. Yes, like this. And the uh, hose will go to the each tower. Yeah. One, two, three, four. You put the how do you say? So it's like a like a valve, like a main yeah, valve. valve. Yeah. So you'll you you'll switch them on and off as needed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But mostly we open the top valve. Yeah. And the water comes from the top and goes down, 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 down. Oh, okay. So it goes from one to the next. I mean, or each each one has its own inlet, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, open the the uh, top valve. Yeah. And the water. Uh, comes. I mean, yeah, no, I, th I, th I think I know what you mean. Yeah, so it goes from this. Yeah. And the, the water comes to this level. Yeah. Then the water then you come from through this and it go down to, to the, the next, next one. one. Uh, okay. So w what's the point of the, the, the corkscrews on them? If you want to water each one separately, is that why you have the corkscrews? Why? Oh, so like it, it fills up the top one. And then you take off the corkscrew, and then it goes to the next one, and then you take off the corkscrew, it goes to the next yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, got it, got so, it. So, so, so automatically, like after uh, one hour, yeah, all the all the levels will be watered. Will be watered. Okay, okay. Um, and it, and after like like uh, around five minutes, uh, after water all the levels and wait five minutes, then we. Uh, the water will drain out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So so it's like a uh, it goes from one level to the next, pretty much. So, but you you have the ability to water each one separately, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can close those valves. But you just find it's easier to do it this way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. You have the optionality to do it either way. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we so like these. Six levels. Yeah. One, two, These three, ones are being four, watered. Five, six will be like we put the radish. Yeah. In this. So and uh, above is mizuna. So we we water separately. Yeah. So yeah. If, if we if we want 
water separately, then we put the valve, open the valve here. Got it. Okay. And that's because this is a different crop, whereas this, these are all the, these are all the same? Yes. Oh, or have the same water requirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, that makes a lot of sense. And then this one, what, what crops are you growing on? Uh, also red mustard. Oh, okay. Red kale and mizuna, but different dates. Yeah, they look a lot younger. Yeah. 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 We harvest twice a week. Okay. So this is going to be, uh, we harvest this on Monday. And the last, last one was uh, on Thursday. Oh, okay. So them. every Monday and Thursday yes. you harvest. And then you just date them here so you know what, what they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so this is going to be harvested on May 9th, is that right? Yes. Okay, okay. Um, cool. And then the same thing here, except you're growing, it looks like sunflower, beets. Yeah. Uh, and then also, is this just overflow? Is that what this is used for right yeah, now? Overflow and yeah. uh, also the, the sun, for the sunflowers, uh, we water uh, from the top. Yeah, from the top. Got it, hand. got it. Okay. Yes. Just to get, is that to help the shells come yes. off? Yeah, yeah. And um, we uh, brush them. Yeah, brush them yeah. every day to help have, them shell. To yeah, help. to get the shells to yes, come yes. off. Do you have to uh, wash them before packaging them? Or is the, just watering from the top clean them enough for when and you harvest them? Yeah, after harvesting, we wash again. Okay. But just, do you have to wa wash everything or just the sunflower? Just the sunflower. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Um, okay, cool. Uh, and then in terms of harvesting, uh, you're using, are you using the harvester for almost all crops? No? Yes. Yeah. And yeah, uh, except herbs. Except all the, herbs. All the greens. Oh, okay. Greens. So the herbs you do by hand still. Yes. Oh, okay. Interesting. Did you did you try with the harvester and it just was causing issues? Uh, I tried, but like mm, they they are very too soft and oh, okay. they damage easily. Ah, uh, really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, and then in terms of lighting, mm -hmm. um, it looks like you have. Mo like the red and blue, which is probably from my recommendation from <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, when, when we first yeah. started doing consulting two years ago. Um, mm -hmm. How do you find these guys work compared to, um, well, I guess these are the only ones you've ever used, right? It yes. looks like I only see one style of lights. They seem yeah. to be working well. What, like you, you haven't had any issues with them? Mm, not really. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we also have well, uh, another light as well. Okay. Uh, Maybe over there. So we can switch. Oh yeah, I see down there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, these are the ones you can switch the. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's cool. And do you find there's any difference in in growth between? Um, growing not, but uh, but for us visually, <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, because it's easier to see like you know if there's anything on the trays or anything. Um, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It makes it uh, easier because I'm so used to the, the purple light that like it's just normal to me. But I know for a lot of people, like the first time seeing like th seeing this versus that is like it, it's it, it can be a lot for the eyes. Yeah, um, but it's safe. There's no issues with having the lights be like this um, from like a health perspective. I've been looking at lights like this for almost a decade and <laughs> my eyes are fine. Um, OK, cool. And then uh, packaging you do in the other facility right yes. so maybe let's let's okay. go there this is our soil uh, okay yeah <laughs> and we deliver greens oh nice like nice okay cool yeah, yeah it looks like you got a lot of space in there <laughs> to uh to deliver which is really nice yeah, Do you, I guess this thing must get pretty full, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Soon, soon. Uh, will it, will this be enough in the new facility? Still, uh, I don't think so. You're gonna. You think you're gonna get a bigger one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like it's a pretty good size, especially for you know cars are a lot smaller generally. Yeah. In Japan, yeah. from what I've noticed, so <laughs> yeah. um, it's cool to see that. Yeah. So they're just the most popular car in Japan. It, oh, really? Yeah, I think. <laughs> what brand is it? Oh, uh, so, uh, is it Nissan? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't see a symbol. Um, <laughs> so they're just they're weighing out the seed now, mm -hmm. which is something that you you won't have to do very soon. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. Um, so this is where you weigh out the seed, and then uh, you have is that, is that a fridge to keep the product? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and then um, for packaging. For packaging the 
Oh, so you do you mix them in there? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. So put the greens in here and mix. Do you uh -huh. do you weigh like does it does the, uh, we the, weigh. the percentage matters for each yes, one? Yes. So um, if you're short one variety, can you put more of another, or do you have do you keep it always the same ratio of each almost, one? Almost almost same the ratio. Yeah, yeah. But it depends on the uh, results of the harvesting. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Each time different. It will be a little bit different. Yeah. 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 But the the goal is just to have the flavor be the same and the colors and everything yes. be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So mix them in here. And then you weigh them out in uh, like, cl like clamshells. Is that what you sell? You sell it in clamshells, the product? Yeah. Um, Everything's very well organized, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, we, we use this clamshell. Okay. For the like uh, single hubs. I mean, not, um, not mixed ones. Okay, so for individual varieties, you use these smaller ones. Yes, and then you use bags for for the mix for the mix. Okay, and one bag, hundred grams. Okay, okay, yes. and that's and that's what you find. Is that like the standard here, or is that just what what kind of worked? The standard here is like twenty grams. Twenty grams. Yeah, for restaurants. Yes. Wow. So and that's very, what these are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this like eighteen grams. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but for for me, the quality uh. The, if the greens are high quality, then they don't they last longer, yeah, right? Yeah. So if you even though you put hundred grams, then the chef will be happy. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, and what do you find the shelf life is on the on the product? Like, uh, I think over a week, and around like ten days. Ten days. Yeah. I think. But the chefs go through them well before that, right? Mm -hmm. Generally, yeah. I think. Um, like certain things like pea shoots, the shelf life is so long in them. Yeah. But then there's certain, like some of the more fin like small natured greens. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some like, for example, arugula, basil. Uh, yeah. I know you're not growing those, but those like really yeah. don't last we, as we, long. We tested the uh, basil and arugula, but, but they, don't, that's, they don't last longer, yeah. so we yeah. fit. Yeah, so you cut them yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense because like, uh, yeah, if, if you're growing like 50 varieties, it starts getting pretty complex, mm -hmm. you know, to manage everything. So you just grow what's most popular and what works best. Um, and it sounds like the mix is doing really, really well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm excited to see the uh, the new Japanese mix if you end up doing mm -hmm. that. I think that would be cool too to, Thanks, to have yeah. like a, a, the next product for the new facility um, and target the new types of restaurants. Mm. Um, do you have any of the product packaged here yes, by any chance? Yes. Yeah, I love so this is the mix, right? Yes. Yeah. And this is uh, maybe 200. 250 grams. grams. Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, the purple radish variety is like, it's really vibrant in there. Yeah. Um, we don't grow the amaranth. So, yeah. Instead of yeah. Amaranth. But it looks like it's a good variety because some of the, the red amaranths are really uh, green. Like uh, the, the, the uh, I, I found a lot of them are very green. So, this one looks like it's like, um, very very purple which is nice because then it adds the color without having the complexity of having amaranth um and then this is nasturtium mm -hmm. which is interesting um so you is that is that something you grow commonly as well yes okay and we sell we sell like this individually so, yes yeah i love the flavor of them they're so yeah, with, like spicy. with the stem yeah we yeah sell, yeah with the stem yeah the stem has the uh powerful flavor oh really yeah oh i didn't know that interesting yeah. huh. so they look great. I've never. It's so hard to get them that small because usually they grow and the leaves grow so big yeah. on them. Um, so yeah, um, it's nice to see also the quality that the stems are a, a great length uh, for the product. So it's like you know, it's a high quality microgreen product, um, which is the market you're selling to. So it works out works out well. Yes. Um, Cool. So uh, in terms of expansion plans, so you're going to be moving to that new facility mm -hmm. and your plan is to, to have that new product. Um, and then do you, do you plan on staying there at that new facility for a while or are you planning to, to, to keep growing beyond that? Um, so you mean like like from now, like in the future? Yeah, after, yeah. After the new farm? Yeah, like what, what are your plans for the next like five years with, mm, with the farm? It's very difficult. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm struggling with the uh, like team member hiring the new staff and also selling the products too. 
So and also building the new farm. Like yeah. there's many many problems right yeah. now. So, uh, but but just put put that put it away. Then I can, I don't know. Maybe I I just planning to for the, for the, yeah focus on to the yeah no for sure one. Yeah, yeah no I I don't I don't blame it. I I I kind of think the same way. I never really planned for the farm to be the size it was yeah. it was just like okay the demand was there i had the energy and i loved what i did which it seems like you know it's, it seems like very clear that you love what you do and you have a great team here that's helping out build this uh this dream that mm. you've created um and it's exciting to to see it uh in person for the first time and uh yeah i'm excited to see the new facility up and running on social media so if anyone wants to follow you on social media or, or, or visit your website and learn mm -hmm. more about yourself and the farm, where can they find you guys? Uh, we have Instagram account uh, called Edo Mae Harp. So please, please follow us. Yeah, yeah. Take a look. Like if, if you're if you're interested in like seeing, they have a lot of videos on like the the automation and the product and the chefs they're working with. So it's a really great account to follow to get some inspiration yeah. for some of the farms that are starting out or even ones that want to get to that scale of growing. You know, five hundred, seven hundred, a thousand trays plus. Uh, over time, I think uh, you guys are a great example and leader in the industry. So uh, it's so great to see your facility. And thanks so much for, for having me at the farm. Thank you. Thank you very much.